All right, Sarajit, it is great to have you in. That was a fantastic uh, first talk that hopefully we'll, we'll build upon, but um, I'd love to start super basic. Uh, why don't we just do a quick introduction of yourself, your role, and uh, maybe one thing you're working on right now. Great, great to be here. Thank you, Jack. Uh, I'm Surajit Chatterjee. I'm Chief Product Officer at Coinbase. Uh, in my role, I lead product management, uh, design, uh, user research, and strategic programs. Uh, so I'm re responsible for product strategy and roadmap, which basically translates to our user and revenue metrics. And one thing that I'm excited about and <laughs> Uh, really focused on right now is uh, upcoming launch of Coinbase NFT. Awesome. Well, we might have to dive into that in a bit, but because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of questions I could ask on that, and probably some you're able to answer and some you're not. But um, but uh, that's that's fantastic. Um, I'd love to. Coinbase is obviously one of the biggest companies in the space, one of the most trusted and well respected companies in the space. Um, I'd love to maybe step back a bit and hear how you, the chief product officer at Coinbase, would articulate the strategy today. Um, and maybe what are a few kind of top level priorities that you and the team think about in the near term? Look, Jack, we think over the next few years, um, probably a billion people will start um, using crypto. And I think they will go through kind of three phases to get there. Uh, crypto as an investment vehicle, crypto as a financial system, and crypto as a platform or an app platform. And our strategy is kind of organized around these three pillars. So first, crypto as an investment. So this is our core business, and it, it's the foundation of, the, of growing the crypto economy. So you know, this is the first use case. People want to come and buy their first Bitcoin or Ethereum or any coin, and then they want to hold that token and you know, see it grow. And this is, this is where we have built the world's most trusted on-ramp and custodial app for Encrypto. The phase two is how do, once you hold that token, how to make it useful, right? So what can you do with that token with that, those, all, all those coins? And uh, this is really the utility phase of crypto. And what we are doing here is we are offering a variety of financial services powered by the crypto infrastructure, by blockchain infrastructure from say payments uh, earn program, so you can earn money by just learning about crypto, borrowing against your portfolio, lending if in a crypto uh, back debit card, uh, and a uh, variety of other things that are basically really make your Coinbase account, your primary financial account to the crypto economy. And then the third phase is crypto as an app platform. Uh, we are seeing you know, crypto companies and all these protocol teams are basically driving new innovation and products that go beyond pure financial use cases. So we are investing heavily in discoverability use and usability of these third party products uh, in the crypto economy, uh, how to also help the developers build products faster and better. And I can talk more about those things in, uh, as we talk, uh, get into the details, but those are the three pillars of our strategy. Awesome. And I, I would love to, uh, I read in, actually, I watched in a prior interview, you share a bit about your story, uh, your beginning with crypto. I think it has to do with your father in India in 2016. Um, maybe just share that quick story with the audience, just how you um, got interested in crypto in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I was a crypto curious person. I was not like <laughs> deep into crypto. I held some uh, tokens and so on. And the start point was, you know, I was in India, I was working for this company called Flipkart, which is India's largest e-commerce portal, kind of the Amazon of India you can think of. And this was uh, year 2016 and the government of India announced this uh, new policy called demonetization, which meant basically every, all the cash you held in your hand was invalid <laughs> starting the next day. And you have to deposit, you had a finite amount of time, you have to go to a bank, deposit your cash, and then wait for government to print new cash, and then you can get new cash. So this was a hugely disruptive uh, process for the entire country. And as you can imagine, most of India was, uh, it still is, many Indians are not even banked, right? Underbanked, unbanked population. So it was it was a hugely challenging and problematic for people. I know my dad was almost seventy five at that time, 
and he had to uh, wait in line for num many, many hours. You know, banks had huge lines, of course, as you can imagine, you have right. this cash in hand and it's like a ticking time bomb that cash will be, <laughs> become useless. <laughs> You right. have to deposit them within certain time right. period, <laughs> and right. then you wait. So yeah, he had to do that to to get money, and that's when I started really thinking about crypto much more deeply. And I bought my first uh, crypto tokens. I bought some uh, Bitcoin, <clears throat> some Ethereum on Coinbase actually, uh, and I thought this is a this this is a better better financial system. Potential. Well, there you go. Yeah, I, I love I love personal stories like that. and makes makes a ton of sense on why you'd be so passionate to lead an organization to to uh, bring that functionality to, to billions of people around the world. So uh, thanks for thanks for sharing that quick story. I'd love to jump back to the products because I think if I if I have it correct, uh, there's something like two or three dozen products that Coinbase operates today. Um, maybe just we could double click into one on the consumer side and one on the enterprise side. And on the consumer side, I'd love to just hear a little bit more about the um, flagship product, Coinbase.com. Uh, could you just share a little bit about how it works? What are some of the core challenges uh, that you face when you're building that? And um, maybe what's next on that on that platform? Yeah, maybe just to give a little bit of context to, to your audience. Uh, today, we have around 89 million verified users. Uh, so these are our retail customers, around 11,000 institutions and around 185,000 ecosystem partners in over 100 countries worldwide. And wow. these partners, users and institutions, basically, they trust Coinbase to you know, help them invest, spend, save, earn and use their crypto in a variety of different ways. So we are building for all these different types of customers uh, to give, make it a little bit more concrete on Coinbase.com. Maybe a couple of things. Our focus there is to make things, uh, make crypto just easier uh, for everyone, right? How do we right. build the, the easiest on-ramp to crypto? And how do we build a very trusted and safe experience for everyone? And a couple of things there is like, we are listing more and more assets for people. So you, you, can, you can hold and use crypto in a variety of different ways. We are also expanding our footprint Kind of globally, we are launching in many different countries, and we think crypto can really help bridge the economic divide in different regions in the, around the globe. Um, I talked about building Coinbase as a primary financial account for this user, so that's a big focus for our retail right. customers. So how do we make uh, crypto kind of part of their daily lives? So can they spend using crypto? Right. So crypto commerce right. for Coinbase commerce, can they borrow against their uh, portfolio right? and, and use that cash for other things? Can they pay, get paid in crypto? So we launched Coinbase Payroll recently, for example, and we have, we have seen great traction. So that's on coinbase.com. And of course, the challenge always there is, how do we make the complexity of crypto kind of uh, remove that and right. make it really easy and simple for users to understand and, and see the utility of crypto. Right. Um, on the enterprise side, uh, and let me talk about Coinbase Cloud. I mean, Coinbase yeah. Cloud is uh, is world's you know, top fintechs, uh, custodians, exchanges, uh, and many crypto builders, developers actually use cloud, cloud to accelerate their roadmap and add crypto to products and services to their app. So we have APIs that make it easy for uh, developers to read, write, and access data across 25 plus blockchains. Uh, we have um, APIs to, that allow you to um, stake, um, run validated nodes for stay, your own staking. Uh, we have APIs that allow you to um, integrate fiat to crypto rails um, and you know, integrate trading or int integrate custody services in directly into your app. So those are a couple of examples of um, products we built. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks for running through those. And <clears throat> it seems like such a, a, an exciting challenge to not only need to uh, communicate what the platform does and remove friction for users, but also in the same uh, in the same space, educate them on this completely new uh, form of, of uh, financial um, structure and, and uh, utility. So uh, sure, there's a lot of fun product dis decisions and discussions that you have with your team on a daily basis. 
Um, I'd love to switch, switch gears a bit, go back to one of the first things you mentioned that I, that I wanted to come back to, which is um, NFTs. So given the number of existing NFT platforms that exist in market today, um, you know, OpenSea, Foundation, Rarible, Nifty, all with their own sort of niche and perspective and angle on the market. How do you imagine Coinbase fitting into that ecosystem, both partnering with and, and also um, maybe uh, progressing that, that NFT space? Yeah. Look, we have around 89 million verified users and we always uh, stand for making our products usable and trustworthy. So we want to bring the same usability and trust and distribution to NFT. So that's the first thing that got us really inspired to look into this market. Uh, we also see there is an opportunity to make the entire NFT buying experience the more social. So where you can follow, say, other users and other creators. You know, I am a I'm a, you know, an NFT aficionado, but sometimes <laughs> I just don't know what to buy. So I'll go and look at Twitter and and see what right. others are buying. Now you can do that directly inside our app. And when you log into the app, and you'll see this very soon as, as soon as we launch the product, uh, you'll be greeted with a personalized feed of NFTs based on you know, your, your, uh, what you have browsed before and you know, yep. your, your buying and uh, pattern, buying and selling pattern and so forth. So uh, we think this will be an exciting product in the market and slightly different take. On, on the whole NFT space. And of course, we'll learn a lot from uh, customers and uh, we are, we're gonna keep tweaking the product and make it better. Awesome. I'd actually love to, to double click on the, the customer piece because uh, you've mentioned a couple of times just the scale of how many customers you have on the retail side, number of partners on the institutional side. Um, how do you think about serving those groups differently? And also maybe if you, if you can, Maybe just touch on briefly, like how you gain, uh, you gather feedback from those different groups and incorporate that into the product. Yeah, definitely. So maybe I'll talk about each different customer segment briefly. So for our retail customers, as I said, you know, ease of use and trust are the most important thing. So can right. we get the users to finish this task with least number of clicks? And can right. they feel safe and secure while doing that? So the, our focus here has been, you know, how, how do we test? We test this with customers a lot. We do a lot of user research. We also have in-product feedback. So we have integrated tools so you can give feedback, right? While you are actually buying something, buying a token or participating in staking or, or you know, using our, using our card or, or any, any services or any features on our platform. So that's the, that's the process there. We constantly get yep. feedback. We look at feed, customer feedback to make things easier, better. Uh, for institutions, it's a slightly different game. Again, trust is the common theme. We think of Coinbase right. Institutional is like the, our client's kind of trusted bridge for participating in the crypto economy. But institutions want kind of power tools. So we have to build for more advanced users. Uh, and we do a lot of focus groups. We, talk to customers one-on-one -on -one in many cases. We look at what they use in often the traditional finance world, what tools they're use, used to already, and can we do gotcha. something similar uh, in, in the crypto world? And our Coinbase Prime product is a, is a great example, right? We are bringing together the best-in-class custody, multi-venue trading platform, all kinds of advanced trading algorithms like QAP, VWAP, a dedicated support and created this integrated solutions or solution for institutions. Um, and then last, uh, uh, but not the least is the ecosystem partners, the developers, and they are looking for kind of ways to gain efficiency. Can they build right. faster? Can they innovate faster? Can they reach their customers uh, faster and serve their customers better? So uh, of course, trust is a continuous theme that applies everywhere. Yep. Uh, so for developers, we are we are engaging with them in a lot of these communities, developer communities. We talk to developer. We have dedicated teams that talk to developers, our product managers, engineers talk to developers, and sometimes we actually everything we put out for developers, we also use internally ourselves because our engineers are also developers to make sure right. they are happy with those tools. <laughs> so that's kind of right. the process. 
I think it's it's mostly around can you put yourself in the shoes of the customer? Can you be yeah. a customer of your own product? So everything we build, we actually have something called a dog fooding program. So we use our own, our own dog food. So every yep. product goes through the dog fooding process. That means we our employees actually use that product. Um, and uh, we try to get as many employees volunteer to use the product and give feedback. And we have seen, I've seen that to be very, very effective actually. Your employees are often your biggest critic. Right. And, they will find all the bugs um, yep. faster than any customer sometimes. That's 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 fantastic. And and you mentioned a few times the role that trust plays in, in the Coinbase strategy. Uh, it's such a important quality to have in a in a product that's used as frequently as Coinbase is. I'm curious if there's anything else you'd add um, to what you said about how Coinbase, the platform for all these different partners uh, and customers. How does a platform like that build trust? So you mentioned a couple of things like talking to the community, talking to the developers, dog fooding the product, but um, anything else you'd add on how Coinbase has built such a incredible trust in a space that is new, that I think a lot of people are a little bit um, hesitant maybe to be completely trusting uh, as a, you know, in a, in a first interaction with a new, a new product. So curious what else you'd add. Yeah, absolutely. I can talk about a few things. First, you know, we are trying to create a fair and open financial system on crypto. Right? So uh, let's look at our uh, asset listing process. So we have developed a very deliberate approach for adding new assets to our platform. So every asset we list, they have to meet a legal, certain legal compliance and security standard, and they go through a, an independent body called Digital Asset Listing Group. And gotcha. it, this is not something that every... Uh, exchange or platform does, right? So we want to make sure our customers understand understand the risk around those assets and we, we are evaluating those assets uh, in, a, in a fair way. Um, other, another example here will be our security practices. You know, we are the only crypto exchange that has never been hacked. Uh, that's something to talk about. Uh, we stored 98% of our deposits offline in secure cold storage and facilities which are guarded, monitored, with cameras and whatnot for 24-7. Yep. And we maintain extensive insurance policy for all the <clears throat> assets that we put in our hot wallet. And uh, if you look at our retail app, we have a variety of methods to enable two-factor authentication into our main app. So like authenticator app, SMS, UB keys, you name it. And then I'll say that finally, we also work with governments and regulators around the world. We are not shy about speaking to regulators um, because we see regulation is a business enabler. And you know, right regulation, smart regulation, clear rules will really pave the way for more technological innovation, more investment in this space, and gives the public the, and policymakers confidence that these markets are fair. This is not a Ponzi right. scheme. This is not a scam or a fraud. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's such a it's such a critical piece of building a, a global product, a global brand, one that uh, has anything to do with people's personal finances. Because I know you need to have uh, a much higher level of trust uh, built for for folks to to want to use the product. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, I wanted to quickly touch on uh, Coinbase's role in onboarding users into crypto more broadly, just because. As we've talked about a couple of times, Coinbase is one of the most trusted products and platforms out there. What do you view as Coinbase's role in onboarding and, and how does that inform some of the user experience that you and your team build? Yeah, look, we see ourselves as the on-ramp to the crypto economy for everyone. So this means from the crypto novice, crypto curious, average retail trader, all the way to the most sophisticated financial institutions and corporations. So that's a tall order. Right. And, and that means building an adaptable UI. So that optimizes for say simplicity for new users, but also makes power tools available for advanced users. Um, and uh, so that's, that's something that we take very seriously. And we spend a lot of time building our product and designing our product and focusing on the craft of product design to make sure we are we are building the right feature for the right user. 
Um, right. and, and every feature, the other thing is this commitment to uh, ease of use and security and safety. That's kind of a continuous commitment for in everything we build. Awesome. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Well, we've got about five minutes left. I, I know you're a busy man, so I won't keep you past time, but just a few more questions. And then it looks like we've got one from the audience as well. So um, as cryptos evolved from sort of in the very early days, uh, you know, novelty to DeFi to, to tons of utilitarian uh, use cases, um, what are a, a few examples of real world use cases for crypto that get you the most excited to keep building? Yeah. Uh, this is the most exciting part for me. Can crypto become actually a, a utility, right? Not yeah. not just a speculative asset. I think all of right. us who are into in this market, in this industry, and passionate about crypto want to see that day. And I think we are already seeing it. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, first, maybe the crypto as a cross-border glo global payment uh, instrument. And it's just getting easier. You can see recently the Ukraine war, the Ukrainian government actually put their wallet address out to the world and they raised over $55 million from 100,000 people very quickly. You know, historically, if you want to contribute to a charity internationally, you have to just go through many, many hoops, pay fees, right. fill out forms, go to the bank. Uh, this was just super easy for people to do. I mean, we have launched a service uh, on Coinbase today um, uh, to for enabling US, U.S. users to transfer uh, cash from U.S. to Mexico over USDC. So you can send uh, money to your friends and family in Mexico, and the receiver in Mexico can withdraw Mexican peso in tens of thousands of retail shops that we have partnered with. So you can actually get wow. cash. Yeah, and we have seen great traction, and this is over crypto rails, so lower fees and much faster. So that's a That's a kind of a good example. I think a couple of other uh, examples that come to mind are you know, NFTs. We are seeing that NFTs are becoming this asset that was, you know, again, initially people just bought and sold maybe a little bit right. of, uh, kind of bragging rights or speculative purposes. But now we are seeing utility. So we are seeing gaming, for example, is emerging in Southeast Asia. So NFTs are representing characters. People are playing with those characters and yielding tokens. Right. So it's, the whole economy and play to earn gaming. We are seeing music NFTs. We are seeing this interesting innovation like pro, pro apps, proof of attendance NFTs. So right. which is in the digital and the physical world in interesting ways. Like you go to a physical event and you scan a QR code, you get an NFT. So, you know, it's very interesting. We can see like a Pokemon Go for NFTs <laughs> emerge in the right. future. Right. Um, and uh, like crowdfunding uh, DAOs, right? We, we have seen things like Constitution DAO, right? right. Again, within a week, week or so, people raised like over $40 million to buy a, a copy of the Constitution. Uh, we will see, and this is a real world example, right? Of yeah. what we can do. So again, there are probably hundreds such ex examples today, but these are some of the top of mind examples for me. Awesome. All right, well, two more quick questions and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a wrap. Um, you said in prior interviews that you spend hours a day, which is impressive because you're such a busy guy, hours a day listening to podcasts, reading articles, staying curious about the crypto space as a whole. Are there going to be one or two that you'd share with this audience as, as, uh, as your favorites that you'd love to go back to? All right. Uh, I love the Bankless podcast. Uh, they always go Bankless really podcast. deep. Your podcast is great too. Thank you. And, We're trying. We're trying to. After this episode, it's going to be our most fam most popular episode. And I I also like our own around the block podcasts. I listen to that often. But you know there are just so many resources available around on crypto yeah. and so much to catch up on. The, this space is evolving so fast. So every day I yeah. learn something new, which is which is awesome. Great. All right. And final question with a couple minutes remaining. If you could fall down one crypto rabbit hole for a day, maybe just what you're most interested in in uh, in today, uh, what would it be? And put differently, you know, what corner of crypto excites you the most these days? Okay, so you know, my the most recent rabbit hole, rabbit hole is probably the cross chain inter interoperability rabbit hole. So gotcha. if you're doing a multi chain transaction, and I think you know the world will be multi chain, there will be many yellow on chains. 
many L2s on those L1s. And uh, there are just too many hops to do a cross-chain transaction. And the entire plumbing is kind of showing. And I think for crypto to become real mainstream, all that plumbing has to disappear in the background and the whole process needs to be a lot simpler. So that's what right. I'm thinking about. We are thinking about it a little bit. What can we do to help contribute to make the process simpler? Awesome. Well, Surjit, this has been uh, absolutely fantastic. We, we really appreciate you spending uh, 30 minutes with us here at Crypto Driven. Um, we wish you and the Coinbase team all the best. I've heard that you're hiring 2,000 folks in the R&D org uh, in the next year or so, uh, which is uh, staggering. So uh, hopefully everything on your roadmap is, is built and successful. And, and thank you so much again for joining us here on Crypto Driven. Um, really appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all the questions.